indie game development, a dream where creativity, hard work and passion unite to create amazing games. Even Minecraft started as the passion project of a single person and yet it's this very passion that kills indie games. It may sound harsh, but that's what I've realized after three years of failing game development, so listen closely and learn from my mistakes. Recently I got confronted with the fact that I've already quit at least four projects. But what if I told you that's not why I've achieved more or less nothing in the last years. I'm sitting on those unfinished games because I used my passion for creating games completely wrong. And so might you. Think about it like this. None of us would craft the entire interior of Hogwarts just because we like putting together a bed from Ikea. So why do we think we can create the next Hollow Knight, Cuphead or in my case Elden Ring after finishing our first Hello World debug in Java? Little exaggeration, but you get the point. We get so excited and passionate about the idea of our dream project that we forget one simple question pretty fast. Am I able to finish that project? Am I able to finish a 3D open world RPG with no experience in Unreal game development? No, but did I start a project anyways? Yes. I got exhausted and lost in the chaos of a completely overscoped project for someone who wants to get in touch with a new game engine. So I quit. And that's what blindly following my passion brought me. But how do you use that passion for creating games to actually finish your dream project? Split it. If your dream project is an online multiplayer game about sweet cats slaughtering each other with fully customizable weapons in procedurally generated environments, break it down into those separate games. Create one thing after the other before finally merging them back into your dream game. You have to focus on learning the tools instead of binge watching tutorials to put together your dream game as fast as possible just to get overwhelmed halfway through development. Don't get me wrong, tutorials have taught me a lot, but only since I've stopped seeing them as the guy who does all the work for me. You have to use tutorials or any other form of educational content to actually understand what you are doing if you want to improve as an indie game developer. However, one part of game development is often overseen which can destroy your project even though you mastered every other aspect of creating games. Translated into game development, that means without proper planning your chance of failing is immensely high since insufficient preparation and poor planning of the development process can lead to two major problems. Either you don't know what to do next and therefore waste hours on unimportant things or not knowing what to leave out of your project. Especially the second problem, also known as feature creep, is turning indie game projects into overwhelming time wastes, as I've experienced with my latest project. After putting my RPG to rest, I wanted to develop a small space-themed shooter to learn how to finish and publish a game on Steam. But from devlog to devlog, I got more awesome ideas. I fell into a circle of implementing features and getting new ideas, which turned the project into something bigger than the RPG, and made it a fine addition to my collection of unfinished projects. A mistake that could have easily been prevented by planning out the game from start to finish before losing track of the initial goals and features of the project. There are uncountable applications for structuring any kind of project, but because I didn't want to invest my time into writing down the things I had in mind, I ended up wasting an entire year on a project I never wanted to create in the first place. So do yourself the favor and spend the day structuring your project. Set goals and deadlines for yourself and your team and make sure you're focusing on the most important task. No power to feature creep. With that said, I have to address one more thing you need to do in order to see your game published on Steam. Stop relying on motivation because there are two ways it can rip your game apart. Working too hard or not working at all because motivation tells you to. While the problem of not working at all seems to be the bigger one, working non-stop can actually be more harmful to you and your project. Think about it. You have a new game idea and motivation kicks in. In the first month, you spend countless hours alone in front of your PC and get the first things done. One month later, things start to look more like work than this exciting new idea, so motivation decreases. You awake at day 62 and this time you don't feel like working on the project at all. But that's no big deal since you've spent so much time on development during the last two months, right? Actually not. While you took the day off to refuel a part of the energy you lost to the motivation of binge developing your game, someone else created a AAA open world RPG in 48 hours on his toaster. So you think, hmm, I want to be as successful, but that's not possible if I spend my day doing nothing. You get negative feelings about taking a well-deserved break. This feeling builds up to a bad form of motivation, which leads to staring at your screen more and more while taking less breaks and having less fun. As with most bad habits, that turns into a downward spiral 
until you either get burned out or destroy the spiral with those two solutions. Don't let motivation exhaust you and learn from others instead of comparing with them. Even though you would gladly spend 16 hours on developing your game, set yourself a maximum amount of hours that you can pull off consistently and save that eager for the next day. Combine this with stopping comparison with others and you will not only improve your workflow but also become happier. At least that's what happened to me after I applied those solutions to my YouTube journey. I started to compare my videos with better ones but only to learn how to get there and not to get frustrated about the fact that they get thousands of views while I get hundreds. It's the perspective that makes the difference. You can either look at those videos and say, oh boy, I wish I had that many views. Or you can say, well, I already tenfold my views from beginning to now, so let's learn how I can improve my content to tenfold the performance again. And you should do the same thing with your video games. Learning all of that indeed takes time, but I'm pretty confident that I'm finally on track. Personally, I'm following those solutions as close as I can since a few months and development has been pretty enjoyable. It's still an up and down of emotions and I'm far away from being a perfect indie game dev, but improvement is definitely visible. Since I split my dream project into pieces, I've already learned multiplayer game development in Unreal and with Elemental Blades, I'm going to learn how to create enjoyable enemies, beautiful landscapes and how to finish a commercial game with the help of proper preparation. It'll be a long journey until I can merge those pieces into my dream project, but with the right approach it's going to happen. The question isn't if, but when it will happen, so make sure to stick around if you are interested in that. You can either check out the first devlog of Elemental Blades or my first three years of learning game development. Other than that, thanks a lot for watching and I hope the solutions I mention will help at least a few of you to reach their goals. Have a good one.